Welcome to the 75th video on my channel. If you're new here, welcome to my channel, Journeys with Jay. I hope you enjoy it. If you're not, welcome back and thanks so much for your support. So join me on today's journey as I stroll through Ottawa. I look at some of the interesting architecture, some of the buildings of note, including the cathedral, the museum, just the some interesting buildings, some embassies, some parks, and so on. So exiting Majors Hill Park, and we can see the cathedral there standing out. We can see the museum there, and we're going to look at those a little closer in a moment. Here is the exterior of the National Gallery of Canada, located obviously in Ottawa. It is Canada's National Art Museum and the building is over 46,000 square meters and it is the largest art museum in North America by size. The National Gallery holds an impressive international historical collection including work from the French, the Dutch, the Italian as well as a large selection of modern and contemporary Canadian art. The collection includes paintings, sculptures, photographs and multimedia installations. I didn't get the opportunity to go inside, but it is sure worth a visit. As I mentioned, there are a number of interesting installations outside of the museum. For example, this is a photograph pasted on top of the electrical signal box for the stoplight, so that was interesting use. Here we have a piece called The Three Watchmen which was made in 2003 and these figures watch for danger emanating from both the supernatural and everyday worlds. And the function of the three watchmen is augmented here by the close proximity of the symbolic centers of the church and government. Just like any other major tourist city in North America or Europe, Ottawa has its own hop on hop off bus tour as you can see here in the photo. One of the most iconic sculptures outside of the museum is the Maman sculpture, which is a 9.25 meter tall spider with its 26 white marble eggs suspended high above the ground. And it has become a beloved part of the fabric of the city of Ottawa. One of the commentators sees Maman, which is French for mother, as protective nurturing and welcoming of all those who pass under, around or beside it. And some argue that it is a perfect fit for the gallery's entrance and could not suit it better in terms of skill and placement. This is the outside of Notre Dame Cathedral Basilica in Ottawa, which was built in 1853 and has long served as a cornerstone of religious life for the community. It's known for its splendid interior with large stained glass windows and ornate wood carvings. The cathedral also holds several precious relics including golden chalices and historical religious garments. As mentioned in my last video, Ottawa is the home to several foreign embassies and here is just one scene here. A little later we'll see the United States Embassy up close. Here is the outside of the Royal Canadian Mint. Sitting at 330 Sussex Drive in Ottawa is the Global Centre for Pluralism, a Canadian landmark. Construction was first undertaken between 1904 and 1906 by the Chief Dominion Architect of the time, whose other notable Ottawa buildings include the Royal Canadian Mint and the Canadian Museum of Nature. Pluralism refers to a society or state 
that has a balanced representation of groups in politics and culture. Here are some other buildings and structures that I saw along my walk that captured my interest because of their architecture. How about that? Some hot peppers from your kitchen garden right outside your front door. They see me rolling, they hate it, patrolling and trying to kiss me right in there. This is the rare section of the Reconciliation, the Peacekeeping Monument, built in 1992 that commemorates Canada's role in international peacekeeping and the soldiers who have participated and are currently participating. The United States Embassy in Ottawa, which symbolizes a ship, stands for Partnership and Alliance. The U.S. has had an official diplomatic presence in Canada since 1827. Embassy of the United States of America. Embassade de Estarias. All right, let me just start. <laughs> the embassy was dedicated by President Bill Clinton on October 8, 1999. The magnificence of the embassy building is indicative of the importance and value of the relationship between the United States and Canada. As was done in Barbados, fountains in capital cities often commemorate the introduction of piped water. The inscription on the York Street Millennium Fountain Marker reads, In the mid-19th century, fresh, pure drinking water was difficult to obtain in Ottawa. Residents could either purchase it from water carriers who hauled it up from the Ottawa River or fetch it from their local public well. This made life difficult for the citizens and there was a demand for readily available fresh water. In response, the city of Ottawa financed the construction of wells and drinking fountains throughout the streets of Ottawa. These wells and fountains were usually at prominent intersections and designed for use by both people and animals. Many were handsomely designed in cast iron or stone and became integral parts of the streetscape. The York Street Millennial Fountain serves as a reminder of the era when water, our most precious commodity, was not freely available to all. It also commemorates the important role the City of Ottawa played in supplying fresh water to its citizens. Here is the Ottawa sign in York Street. Led by the ambitious American railroad magnate Charles Hayes, the Grand Turk Railway flourished throughout Western Canada in the late 19th century. 
When the railroad finally arrived in Ottawa, Hales hired the Canadian architectural firm Ross and McLaren to build what would become the Chateau Laurier. The architects designed the building with the French Renaissance style of architecture, but also included a bit of Gothic Revival style flair. Hayes spared no expense on the project. Unfortunately, Mr. Hayes never got to see the opening of the hotel as he died when the RMS Titanic sank in April 1912. The hotel has hosted dignitaries like Queen Elizabeth II, Winston Churchill, King George IV, Nelson Mandela, and former U.S. President Herbert Hoover. Joseph Karsch, a world-renowned portrait photographer, operated his first studio from the sixth floor from 1970 to 1992. He photographed many international celebrities from this space, of which 15 of these pictures have been gifted to the hotel. Illustrious international celebrities like Shirley Temple, Harry Belafonte, Roger Moore, and Smokey Robinson have all resided at the Chateau Laurier. Right next to the Fairmont Chateau L'Oreal is the Ottawa Lots of the Rideau Canal. I did a video on this previously, I'll put the link in the description or you can click on the title above. Here I'm walking outside the Canadian Tribute to Human Rights, also known as the Human Rights Monument. It is a sculpture located at the corner of Liskar and Elgin Streets in Ottawa, unveiled by the 14th Dalai Lama on September 30th, 1990. Standing over 30 feet high and constructed of red granite and concrete, the monument's red granite facade bears the text of the first sentence of Article 1 of the United Nations Universal Declaration of Human Rights. All human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights. The struggle for freedom, justice, and equality is as old as human history itself. Thank you so much for joining me on this part two of my visit to Ottawa. I hope you enjoyed exploring parts of Ottawa with me and be sure to come back as we explore Ottawa some more in the next Journeys with Jay. Until next time, take care. God bless. It's your boy saying Jay out.